The Tableau we are using today is not just for creating traditional graphs and charts. You can use it to mine actionable insights thanks to the plethora of features and customization it offers. Hi all, this is Upasna from Edureka and this session is going to be your step-by-step -step guide to explore a few lesser talked about options in Tableau for data science and BI beginners. We will create calculations to dive deeper into our data to extract insights, trends and forecast through a feature called exponential smoothing. We will also create calculations in a few advanced graphs that go beyond the drag and drop features of Tableau. We'll also be looking at how R can be integrated and used in Tableau. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the module. Now the first two modules are more intermediate than advanced, but you'll be needing these to do the advanced stuff I'll be talking about much later in the module. So kindly bear with me for a bit. So first of all, we're going to be talking about forecasting. Now the forecasting is about predicting the future value of a measure. Now there are many mathematical models for forecasting and Tableau uses the model known as exponential smoothing. Let's move on to our Tableau desktop to see what we can do with it. All right, now Tableau takes a time dimension and a measure field to create a forecast. So we'll be doing a simple forecast with which we'll obtain the value of measure sales for next year using this data source. We are going to be using this sample superstore, which Tableau provides us with. As you can see, you have order IDs, order date, the ship date, mode, customer name, segment, country, city, and so on. This is what your entire data set looks like. All right. So for forecasting, first of all, we're going to be creating a line chart with our order date in the X axis. And then we are going to be taking sales in the Y axis or the rows. And by default, this is what Tableau does. It is going to suggest the best possible graph if you're going to input any X or Y axis into it. On completing this step, you will find this option to set various options for forecast. So we're going to go into analysis, forecast and show forecast. It's pretty simple. Now we're going to edit it. We're going to keep the forecast length at automatic and fill in values with zero. We're going to aggregate by its automatic quarters right here. All right, you can even choose the timeline from which you want your forecast to be. I'm going to choose two years. All right, the result of the forecast looks something like this. You can also get minute details of this forecast by choosing the option describe. So you can do this using two methods. First is a simple right click on the forecast here. You can go to forecast and show describe forecast. Here you can see the time series, measures, the forward forecast, what the forecast is based on. And here is some bonus information for people who are working with analytics. Here is the initial of quarter four, 2018, right up to the quarter three of 2020, seasonal effect, trend and seasons contribution on your data, quality and so on. By checking this box, you can also see these numbers in percentages. With that, let's move on to the next thing. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is trend lines. This is something important. It might be an intermediate level operation here, but it's going to be useful in the later part of the video. So trend lines are used to predict the continuation of a certain trend of a variable. It also helps to identify the correlation between two variables by observing the trend in both of them simultaneously. Here we are back to our Tableau. 
Now, there are many mathematical models for establishing uh, trend lines. Now, Tableau provides four options. They are linear, logarithmic, exponential, and polynomial. In this module, I'm only going to discuss the linear model. So again, Tableau is going to take the time dimension and a measure field to create a trend line. And we are going to be using the same sample superstore. And we are going to find the trend for the value of the measure sales for next year. So again, I'm going to drag the order date here. And the measure sales to the row. If I go to analysis, I see the trend line box is checked in. And that is why we can see these lines right here. If you touch a line, it will show you the sales of the year and the year of order date, along with two other values, which are the R squared and the P values, if you can see. Now, the R squared and the P values that you see on your screens right now is two measures that is used in the correlation expression. Just like we did in the forecasting, you can also describe the trend line or trend model right here. This is for you to get the minute details. Here you have the model formula, you have the number of model observations, filtered observations, your sum squared error, your mean squared error, your R squared standard error and the p-value. And another thing for people with a statistics heavy background, you also have the standard error, t-value and p-value for hypothesis testing. The next thing I'm going to be talking about are a few advanced charts in Tableau. Now, almost all Tableau users are privy to the various elementary graphs that you can do by your drag and drop option. Such charts are easily made using the show me feature of Tableau. But since this module is meant for more advanced users, we are going to move beyond the show me and explore graphs that require some extra computation. So first, let's take a quick look at what we are going to be making in the next few sections. The first out of which is the waterfall chart. All right, so waterfall chart basically derives its name from its analogous orientation and flow. And we are going to be plotting the running sales of the superstore over its years. So let's start with it while I talk you through the implementation. So let's begin with a basic graph. We are going to take at X axis the order date and at Y axis we are going to be taking profit. Now, because our marks card here is automatic, we are going to get a line chart. A waterfall chart is a derivative of a line chart. That is why we are beginning with this graph. Now, I'm not going to be talking in detail about the line chart here. For that purpose, we have a video on our channel. Now, this also implies that this is a chart which can be used to analyze the cumulative effect of a measure and see how it increases and decreases as a whole. So let's just make it to understand it better. So we're going to right click on this profit pill looking option right here. And there's something known as a quick table calculation where we are going to select a running total. Now we're going to change the mark type from automatic to a Gantt bar. And now we're going to be creating a calculated field. So go to analysis, create calculated field. We're going to be creating something called a negative profit. In a bit, I'll tell you why are we doing this. Here we already have profit and it's the negative sign. 
Now, this is a beautiful thing about Tableau. If you see in the bottom of the window, you can see this message called the calculation is valid. If I go back on this and just keep it this way, it's going to show that the calculation contains errors. Now, this is a beautiful thing for beginners because you will know where you have gone wrong right from scratch. So we're going to go back to what we had written and OK. Now we're going to drag this column over the size in the marks bar. And you will understand why exactly have I created this measure. All right. Now this calculated field was to fill in the space in the Gantt chart, which was empty. A negative value in the profit extended the bar downwards. If I would have added a positive profit, the bar would have gone upwards. Now the length of each small bar in the chart represents the amount of change in the profit from one month to the next. So we're going to put it in months so that we have a bigger chart to work with, obviously. So finally, I'm going to take this profit, the actual positive profit, and drag it to the color. Here you can see the darker blocks are the ones that represent more profit, while the lighter ones show less profit. And by going onto each chart, you can see the negative profit and profit of that month. And if you want a little variegation in this graph, you can just go to color, edit colors, and choose what you like. I'd go from red to green, red being bad, green being good, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, and okay. Now this is your waterfall chart already. Now, the graph that you see on your screens right now could be very easily represented in the form of a bar chart. But I'm sure you would all agree that using a waterfall chart was a way more intuitive way of representing the data, especially to see the changes in the measures, such as a sales profit over the years. This implies that this is also a chart which is used to analyze the cumulative effect of a measure and see how it increases and decreases during the whole while. With that, let's move on to our next chart. Now this chart is called the Pareto chart and it is basically a combination of both a bar chart and a line chart. In a bit, I'm going to talk to you about the significance of it. Let's go back to Tableau. Now, first of all, I'm going to just make a bar chart so that I can talk about a few things in particular. So I'm going to be using a subcategory right here in the product. I'll take the subcategory, put it in the columns, and then I'm going to take the sales in the Y axis. I'm going to change the marks into a bar chart. All right. And then I'm going to sort the subcategories in a descending order. Please stay with me. I have an important point to make here. All right, now we have it all in descending order. So here I have visualized a popular 80-20 principle of data analytics. If you have not heard of it, let me try and explain it to you right now. So it is often observed that the majority of sales in a superstore comes from a select few products. One cannot expect raw chicken and raw rice to have the same sales figures as cooked biryani, right? So this is officially termed as the 80-20 principle, meaning that 80% of the sales come only from 20% of the products that are available in the store. In our superstore, the principle can be observed in this chart, where most of the sales are generated by phones and chairs. 
It's a quite popular visualization, Pareto charts, to be honest. And hence, it is often used for risk management to determine the most common problems that are having the most negative impact on the project. But here we will see it can have other applications as well. So next, I'm going to be dragging over the sales pill into the rows again. Now we have two charts and I'm going to take the second sales pill and I'm going to add dual axis. If I turn this into automatic, it turns into something like this. Now I'm going to run a total running calculation right here. Okay. And now I'm going to change one sales pill into a bar graph, which is already done. And the second sales into a line graph. So it basically turned the running total into a line graph. As you can see, it's a combination of both a bar graph and a line graph. And all that is left to change is the color scheme. I'm going to turn this line orange. So it creates better visibility and let's just put up some markers on it. And it's all possible by using the marks card here right on the left. All right, with that, you have your Pareto chart ready. And next and finally, I'm going to be talking about something which is honestly not that difficult to make, but it definitely intrigued me enough to make its way into this slide, which is the motion chart. We are going back into our Tableau. So our aforementioned data set is already imported, as we all know, and I've mentioned it quite a few times. It is the sample superstore. On our x-axis, we are going to put up the order date. And we're going to change this into month. And on our y-axis, we're going to put sales and profit both. So sales and profit. So we have two line graphs and I'm going to be taking the second one and putting it as a dual axis. Here it appears in two different colors, great for visibility. All right. And if you might have noticed on the right, you see this something called measure names right here. Keep your eyes on the right to see something that's going to happen next. So basically the chart I'm going to be making is inspired by Hans Rosling's World Economic Presentation. If you all haven't seen it, I'd recommend you take a minute after the session and give it a look. And by now, I'm hoping making trend lines like the one on your screen right now should be easy for you. But what we'll be doing is creating this in motion. It's kind of like a GIF, but better. So I'm going to be changing the mark type. Okay. I'm going to be changing the mark type into a circle. And I'm going to be dragging the order date into the pages shelf. And I'm going to change it just the way it is in the columns, which is by month. All right. Now on the right, remember I had asked you to keep an eye on the right of the page. On the right, we have this option called show history, which for me is already checked in. I'm going to go there. Go to trails. Here the format selected is none, but you can go ahead and choose any color or dash type that you like. For me, I like solid lines better, so I'm just going to keep it that way. Here I have my speeds selected. All I have to do now is play it. And you can see it works exactly like a GIF. And it shows you month by month sales and profit. If I want, I can increase the speed. I'll come really, really fast. And now how cool is that? 
With that, I come to the end of this segment where I had to show you advanced Tableau charts. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is probably the most interesting part of this live, which is the R integration with Tableau. Now, R provides a powerful way to do statistical analysis on large sets of data. It is also free, which is a compelling factor to its growth. Now, because it is an open source, new functions and packages are created all the time on it. So if you can't find a capability initially, you can search for a package that can do it or even create a package of your own. Now, the one thing I like about the newer versions of Tableau is that it's not just a tool meant to create pretty graphs with a mere drag and drop option. With the release of the Tableau 8.1 in 2013, came a plethora of new different functionalities. The introduction of R to enable making richer and dynamic visualization was one of the most predominant features. Now, R can be used with Tableau for techniques such as clustering, prediction, and forecasting. And these are just a few to name. So I wanted to test it myself. Now, I wanted to start the exploration of R and Tableau by doing something really, really simple, like clustering. So I used this ultra popular data set called Iris, which I'm sure most of you must have started your journey in R with. It contains different features to distinguish between three types of flowers, namely Virginica, Sentosa, and Versicolor. So this is what the data set looks like. You have your sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width in centimeters, and the class it is divided into. So first, let's go through the basics and the installation process before delving into the visualization. Now for that, I'm going to be moving to my R Studio. All right, you basically install something called as an R server for that basically going to do what you do to install all packages, install.packages and put these in inverted commas, your R serve. Next you call the library. Same thing. And then finally your R serve. Then you're going to select it all and run them. For me, I've already run them once before, so I already have these packages installed. So I'm going to go back to my Tableau. Now, R scripts are written in Tableau as table calculations, which are sent to the R serve package of R. And then the functions take place and it is reflected in Tableau. So obviously to properly understand and thereby use this feature, you must possess at least some knowledge of R and a few different syntaxes. Now step two, you come back to Tableau, go to your help option, go to settings and performance, and manage external service connection. Here by default, it would pick up R serve, on server, you're going to be typing localhost and port it to 6311 and then test your connection. Tableau is going to give you a confirmation like this, which is successfully connected to the external server. Okay. All right. So now that you have the proper ingredients, let's start cooking. So basically you make use of Tableau's table calculation, the one which you find in analysis right here. To type your script in R. I hope your initial excitement of making clusters is still there. So let's proceed. My data set has been imported to Tableau and you can basically make this graph while dragging both your petal length and petal width to the columns and the sepal length and width to the rows. Then I'm going to go to analysis and uncheck this aggregate measure so that I get this cluster like graph. I'm going to make this bigger for you all to see. 
So finally, to form the clusters, I'm going to take the class which divided uh, the flowers into three types. And then I'm going to go over to the color. What we have here is a scatter plot which shows clusters of data points divided into three distinct clusters. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same with R and now compare the two visualizations that we get. And for that we are going to be using the most common clustering algorithm. I'm expecting to see something like this but we are going to start doing it from the beginning. So I'm going to add a new worksheet. Same thing which I did previously, I'm going to take this. I'm going to go to analysis and uncheck the aggregate measures. All right. Now, I'll be creating a calculated field. I'm going to be naming it cluster. Now these four functions in Tableau are clear to this desktop server that it is going to be used for our script. So I'm going to take script for integer and put in the expression. I'm going to be creating a variable called result and I'm going to be allotting a data frame to it. We have four arguments. And we are going to allot all of it to cluster. Now I'm going to be taking the sum of all the columns that we have the petals and the sepals all in centimeters All right. Now all we have left to do is we are going to take the cluster and move it to the marks pane. It'll take some time to process. Please be patient. All right. Now let's just change the color a little bit so we can see more clearly. going to pick this color and apply it. Now I'm going to go back to the scatter plot we had created earlier 
This is the one we had created before and this is the one that we have created now. Although there are a few overlaps, the two visualizations do appear to be quite accurate. And this is only a small gist of the potential of integrating R with Tableau. Its applications are limitless and I'm sure most of you have already started to think of different ways that you can interact with it. Now, it would be naive of me to say that this is all that there is to Tableau, but this is all the demos that I've had for this live session. As new versions roll in, so do new functionalities. Not only that, people are always experimenting and exploring Tableau and coming up with new visuals. There are these multiple blogs where people publish their experiments with data too. Please do check them out. Also, there's something else that I would really want to show. So this is it. You can also find new and gorgeous visualizations weekly on the Tableau's official gallery page. I would definitely advise you to keep up with these posts and create your own visuals and sharing it with the community. So I would like to conclude my session by saying, see the data, show the visual and tell a story. Stay creative and all the best on your journey as a data explorer. Thank you and have a great day.